So that was my song, Let Me Go. And that song hasn't been released yet. It's just a song I've literally finished and I've submitted it to some labels. And if it gets rejected by labels, it will probably be coming out independently in the next, I don't know, two or three months. But what I wanted to do today is to show you guys how I made the song in Ableton Live 11 and to show you guys what my overall workflow is. And this one has a little story in that we wanted to create an EP. We had a few songs out, me and this other singer just needed one more song. So I just quickly went away and created this song. It's really just got four chords basically repeating over and over. I used Scalar to help me with the chord selection. In terms of the songwriting, I literally went into Notepad and as you can see, it's just in Notepad. I'm going to actually show you, let you hear what the song sounded like when I first created it back in June. Now it's September, so it's about three months ago. And another beat of my heart, I filled your soul, but I'm lost inside, feeling every bit of it. So as you can tell, it didn't sound great, but this is just how I create my music. I will just put a piano, maybe some pads, bass, and just a basic drum loop together and write because I don't want to be distracted with production at that point. I'm just focusing on the writing. Once I put my vocals together, then I handed the reference track and an instrumental to the singer. And then we went toing and froing in terms of the pitch, in terms of the speed and some of the lyrics. We eventually got to a song with her completed vocals. We had to shelve the EP project, which is a real pity. I thought maybe for this song here, I needed a different type of vocals. So I found a second singer and that's the singer you're hearing now. I want to show you the vocals that she sent me, which are in a vocals group. By the way, there's, if we just have a look at the, the groupings, I haven't really named them very well because I'm the, I thought I was the only one who's going to see this, but this is an instrumental group. There's a drum group, there's a bass group and a vocal group. And the reason why there's four main groups is because I like to put effects over a group but certain types of effects and certain types of compression with the vocal track as you can see they're grouped together this is kind of a supercharger uh, saturator thingy i'm not even sure what it is but it just makes the song sound just a little bit better right and so i just put a test just a tiny bit of that on there the eq is actually not for eq purposes but just to give you kind of a telephone sounding effect in certain parts of the song so you can see here it's been automated so it only appears in certain parts of the song same with the delay it only appears in some parts of the song just to accentuate certain parts of the vocals then there is this kind of overall glue compressor kind of sticking everything together the actual vocal track is one vocal track. She's just sent me one. I'm not a fan of getting hundreds of vocal tracks. I just like one or two just so I can do stuff with them. You can see here it's been chopped up quite a bit. And the reason for that is because I don't really like to hear all of the breathing and all the sort of the stuff that goes on in between the, the words of the song. I'll just solo this. I'll let you hear how the vocal sounds solo. Found another beat of my heart. I filled your soul. But I'm lost inside. So as you can hear there, you can't really hear this bit, which is the breathing. Listen to the difference. Of my heart, I feel okay, so for me, that's a distraction on the song. I just And just it just kills a bit of the energy. So I just take that out. But I do know that there are a lot of producers that like to keep the breathing and actually sometimes even lift the volume up on the breathing. I'm just not one of those guys. That's basically it for the vocal one track. And all I did is I put this voice denoiser uh, VST onto the track, removes just sort of background noise. There might be just some hiss or air from the background from when she's singing. And in this case, there was a little bit. So I just used that to remove the background. And apart from that, the only kind of other interesting thing on the in the vocal group is this track, which is the vocoder track. That once again is there for the purposes of accentuating the track. And in some parts, it's actually the only part of the track. So if we listen to the whole track together with the lead vocal, you can just hear that it's kind of, it's just uh, acting as a background vocal for the song. I can't leave it all behind. All I want to do is let go. I have no time to change my mind. I'm losing control over you. And similarly here, it's just playing by itself and it is actually the lead vocal. OK, 
Okay, so it has a part to play in this song, and actually I have been using it quite a lot in quite a few of my songs. I just love the vocal synth too. That's the Isotope VST. It's one of these ones worth learning <laughs> because it has so many good applications. I tend to use it in MIDI mode. By default, it comes in auto mode, but I use it in MIDI mode. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up. And it has so many different kind of options, talk box, compa box, and all these little effects in the bottom. Just to let you know, the routing for vo vocal synth is that I send the vocal synth to, um, let's just find it, to the MIDI track here. And the MIDI track just has the, the MIDI notes. It's got nothing else in it but the notes from the chords of the song. So on the main track, there are effects. You just don't see them here on the track. Where you see them is in the sends. You can see here it's sending. There is a send from this one here, from this send track to here. So on the vocal send, I've got a few funny effects. I've got a little micro shift, which is a, a sound toys frequency shifter. So it just shifts frequency notes. And it really gives you kind of just a little bit extra sheen, right? Let's actually just solo the, the send track. Hear the difference? There's a shimmer effect, which is a really nice Valhalla reverb. But this one here I really like because it gives you kind of this really top end sheen to the vocal and it's kind of this mysterious type of sheen which I really love. And then finally we have the glue compressor and as you can see here it's routing to track 23 and all that's doing is it's uh, ducking every time the vocal signal comes in. So when the vocal signal comes in there is no reverb but as soon as the vocal signal goes away the reverb goes up right. So it just makes sure that the vocal is very clean. So I'm just going to show you just quickly how that works. You see that it's ducking when the vocal comes in and then it goes down. The next thing I want to just talk about was the instruments. If you have to just look at the MIDI, the MIDI is it's pretty much the same chords repeated throughout most of the song, but there's a lot of dynamics going on in the chords. The main kind of chord, the main driver of the song is this um, VST called Diva. Now, I use Diva to write the song, and Diva is this analog synth VST, which sounds amazing. But um, in the last few weeks, I have bought a Prophet 6, and I've just replaced the Diva with the Prophet 6. Let's have a quick listen to how that works and I'll just explain to you how I recorded it and it's exactly the same process as the soft synth, I just used the hardware synth. So I'm literally manually with my hands slowly increasing the filter, there's no automation, it's just me doing it like that. stronger as as you get towards kind of the crescendo crescendo piece and in addition i did uh, send some of the effects to this other send return track here which is just essentially is just the um just a basic reverb there's also a piano here this piano is called a keyzone classic and it's a free keyboard <laughs> It just does the job. It's a good keyboard. I put an ozone imager there and it just has this really classic 90s kind of sound to it, which I thought went really well. And the same chords are repeated kind of throughout the song. And in some parts of the song, I will just kind of change the rhythm of the, the keyboard. Okay, so there's just some changes. But it's the same chords, right? There's some changes in the rhythm of the chords or the dynamics of the chords. Spire is really good for plucks, so I put a Spire plug-in kind of near the end. As we shift from, say, the verse to the chorus, chorus to the verse, any sort of shift in there, I want to accentuate the vocals. And the way I do that is by adding space.
Okay, and further down, I'm doing the same thing around here. I changed my mind. I'm losing control. So that bit there, I'm losing control. It's just her and there's also, we'll just go down to the bass. There's also this kind of bass thing in here. It's just a little sample, a bass sample. Just have a look at it. I'm it in the song, but for me, it makes a difference in terms of the effect it has on the song. So I try and keep it simple. I don't want to add too many little tricks or effects, but I think just sometimes little things like that do make a difference. And so Repro's got that kind of fat, sort of bassy, fat bass sound. Uh, once again, Spire for the plucky, the more the plucky um, sort of bass sounds or not even bass, but it just the, the combination of Repro and Spire is a match made in heaven. <laughs> Spire for that pluck and Repro for the, the fatness. So let's just listen to a bit of Repro, uh, Spire. And all together. So overall on the on the bus group for the bass, I've added a kickstart too. So kickstart is a side chain. The only thing left now to talk about quickly is drums. And I mean pretty quickly uh, because there's really a not a lot to it. I don't really like doing drum fills. I just do straight drums. If we just have a listen to the main kick sound, you have this kind of very, very basic kick sound. And that's coming from, that's not coming from samples. That's coming from kick to application can change the fatness of it, the length of the tail. You have complete control over the kick. The snare also comes from kick two, believe it or not. On the snare, I have um, made sure I've sort of some of the low end going on there. I put a hi-hat here and claps. The claps are really prominent at the beginning, at the end of the song. The claps always have reverb. So that's basically the meat and potatoes of the song. That's the song pretty much done. So there's quite a few tracks in there and we've talked about quite a few things. What we haven't talked about is the master. Now I've actually deliberately switched the master off. The song sounds 10 times better with the master on, but unfortunately uh, CPU issues are making it impossible for me to demonstrate this to you. But what I can do is show you my mastering chain. So what we have here is a Soothe. So Soothe, it just gets rid of some of the, the middle of the master and it just makes it sound a little bit better. So I just, I don't add it to every song, but I add it to some songs where there's quite a lot going on and this is definitely one of those songs. Then I add an SIEQ. This is an EQ, but this is one that is more of a sound design EQ. And um, I just literally, you can't really see it here, but the, the drive is just just a touch above zero and everything else is is zero. I think the high is on a little bit, but you just need a little bit of this and it just adds a little bit of that high-end sheen to the song, but you don't want to overdo it with this one. Supercharger is on quite a lot of tracks and it's on the master as well. There's also a multi-band compressor by Waves called a C6 Stereo. And I, I'm pretty lazy on this. I just tend to use um, the defaults, but you can use some of the mastering uh, ones. But just adding, just adding the VST default gives it a nice sound. It really just just adds a little bit. And this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about massive improvements, just little bits. There's a limiter at the end, Pro L. I've got Ozone, by the way, and one day I will do a video comparing Ozone with Fab Filter. But for me, Ozone, and I've seen Ozone 10, is just gimmick after gimmick. It's kind of got a bit of everything, but it's not the best of everything. It's not best in class. It's just, just throws stuff in. And I 
really like Pro L2 because it is to me a very simple to use and basically an outstanding limiter to use an all round style, a little bit of look ahead, um, fast attack, release, and it's just pretty, I just keep it pretty simple. I put oversampling in there to get rid of any aliasing. Eight is probably more than enough. I could probably get away with four. Diver, I don't use Diver uh, because that's, I use Ableton's Diver. And out, what I do recommend, and I haven't, I have done it, is you just keep it a little bit below zero. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit because um, apparently that helps with services like Spotify. And then the key thing is getting your, your overall gain and levels right. And uh, the secret source here at the end is Golfos. You always put it right after the limiter. I will put these bands at the end. So this Golf Force works really well in the middle in terms of the song, but you don't really want it at the high end or the low end of the song. It's because it's automating uh, and you, don't, you want to have a little bit more control over the sort of those areas. But what's happening in the middle, the dynamics that's happening in the middle does some magic. <laughs> I'm not even sure exactly what it does, but it if you listen to it with and then without Galfos, there is a difference. And so I t just tend to use it right at the end of the track. That is it. That's enough from me. Enough talking for today. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, DM me. But yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. See you later. Found another beat of my heart. I filled your soul, but I'm lost inside. Feeling every bit of your touch. I am confused Cause it's too much Another day Another time I know exactly What you hide It's easy to say Change my mind I'm losing control over you